From stories around the world to stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. A pleasant evening. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. A very good evening to you. I am Dishan Virakon and we start off by taking a look at your headlines for tonight. The inaugural ceremony of the Tokyo Olympic Games commences. National television is the official TV channel. Rishabh Badyuddin's wife, her father and the intermediary arrested for the death of a domestic aide. Indonesia severely affected by the corona pandemic. 36 die following a landslide at Maharashtra, India. Now in your top story for tonight, several important events in the Buddha Sasana including the preaching of the Damsak Pavatum Sutra by Gautama Buddha had been recorded on the Asala Full Moon Poya Day. Many religious programs were conducted in temples throughout the island on this Poya Day following health guidelines. <laughs> According to the Sasana history, conceiving of Bosat Siddhartha in the womb of Queen Mahamaya Devi, the birth of Prince Rahula and the renunciation of Prince Siddhartha had occurred on this day. It has also been recorded that the breaking of arrogance of the Tirithakas, the performance of the miraculous Yamama Pelahara, the preaching of the Abhidharma to deity Matru Divya Rajaya by the Gautama Buddha also occurred on an Asala full moon Poya day. Another important incident had been the holding of the first Dharma Sangayana in Rajagaha city, three months after the Parinirvana of the Lord Buddha. Religious programs had been organized at temples in the country following health guidelines in connection with the Asala Full Moon Poya Day. The 212th Dhamma Sermon of the Amar Dhamsi Silasa Dhamma Sermon series organized on each Full Moon Poya Day took place today with the participation of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha at the Prime Minister's official residence in Nora Elia. The Dhamma Sermon was delivered by the Chief Sangha Naik of the Northern and North Central Provinces, Venerable Nugetanne Panya Nandatera. A group of people, including Prime Minister's wife, Mrs. Shiranti Vikram Singh Rajapaksha, were present to listen to the sermon. The Sri Lanka Rupa and Corporation conducted the monthly Poya Day program titled Sat Dharma Varsha at the historic Buttara Demetama Raju Mahavihare. The religious program was telecast live throughout the day over the national television. Religious activities were conducted under the guidance of Chief Prelate of the Demetamal Rajama Vihare, Venerable Galtamvatte Panya Ratanathera. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Rupoin Corporation also attended the Dhamma discussion program. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Rupoin Corporation, Reginald Kure, said that a large number of problems that have arisen in the world have not been given by the nature. It has been created by so-called development attitudes. Now the people have been urged to make peace again with nature. The Atwala organization conducts religious programs at temples with historic value on each Poya day with the aim of popularizing the use of organic fertilizer and local agricultural methods. The Asala Poya day program was held at the Papiliana Sunetra Devi Rajamahavihare. 
The program commenced with a sermon of the Venerable Urudumbura Karsha Patera. Equipment were donated to school children and coconut saplings were distributed on the occasion. A group of people, including advisor of the Atwala organization, Venerable Vallampitiya Sumanadam Mathera, and President's Private Secretary Sugishwara Bandara, were present on the occasion. The seventh program of the Yohan Sila Samadhi National Program series took place at the Bellan Villa Raja Mahavihare. It has been implemented on a concept of youth and sports minister Nama Raja Paksha. The main aim of the national program is to encourage youth to take part in religious programs at temples island wide on each full moon poya day. Dhamma discussions took place under the patronage of the chief incumbent of the Bellan Villa Raja Mahavihare, Venerable Dr. Bellan Villa Dhamma Ratanathera, and Venerable Professor Madhavache Dhamma Jyoti Thera. All religious programs were conducted according to COVID-19 health guidelines. Now, the Tokyo Olympic Games inaugural ceremony commenced today at the Olympic Stadium. Judoka Chamra Dharmavardhana and gymnast Milka Gihani carried the Sri Lankan flag at the inaugural ceremony. Shaminda Gunaratna filed the story on the inauguration of the Olympic Games ceremony from Tokyo. The 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games are scheduled to be held until the 8th of next month. Sri Lankan athletes are expected to compete tomorrow. Swimmer Anika Gaharu and badminton player Niluka Karnaratna and shooter Tehani Erandi are scheduled to complete tomorrow. Tokyo Jatka Kridangare Sita, Samaram Putsu Sita, other Samugana, Heta Yali Hamunabala Portu. Now taking a look at the COVID situation here at home. 8,278,847 vaccine doses have been given to people under the COVID-19 vaccination program which has been implemented island-wide. The first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine has been given to 87,438 yesterday. The second dose of the vaccine has been given to 13,255. The Pfizer vaccine has been given to 16,628 yesterday and the Moderna vaccine has been given to 16,399. During the last seven days, 1,485,199 vaccine doses have been given to the people. 233,720 doses have been given yesterday. A mobile program to give vaccines to persons who cannot leave their homes and those who could not go to get the vaccine is been implemented in the Kaltara district. Giving vaccines to those people under the Madhuravala Medical Officers area is now taking place. Persons who are employed in the tourism industry at Sigiriya, Dambulla, Ella and other tourism zones are being given vaccines. 1,330 COVID-19 patients were found today. 953 left hospitals today after completely recovering from the virus. The Director General of Health Services confirmed today that 43 COVID-19 related deaths have occurred yesterday. The Government Medical Officers Association met Minister Basil Rajapaksha recently at the Finance Ministry. Discussions took place on the COVID prevention program and problems related to their field. SLT Mobile has donated a PCR machine to the Mathil District General Hospital. The value of the machine is 5.7 million rupees. Steps have been taken to donate PCR machines to selected hospitals island wide under the Samadhyave Satkarya program of SLT Mobile. Senior DIG Ajit Rohan says that police are conducting operations in the western province to nab those who do not wear face masks. He said that travel restrictions are in place between the provinces. He further said that security teams are in operations at entry and exit points. 152 suspects have been arrested in connection with the offences of face mask, social distancing, quarantine rules and regulations for a period of last 24 hours. Total number of 51,733 suspects have been arrested in connection with the same offences since the 30th of October 2022 date. We are conducting constant quarantine operations across the country. In addition to that, it has been noticed that the persons are moving without face masks in public places, especially in the western province. Therefore, the western 
Northern Province Senior DIG has uh, deployed 30 special teams in order to conduct operations in respect of the persons who disobey with the face mask concept and social distancing concept. In addition to that, the provincial restriction order remains as it is. Therefore, the general public are not allowed to cross provincial borders. 13 entry and exit points have been manned by Sri Lanka police to check the persons who are moving through the provincial borders. Accordingly, uh, yesterday, 7,662 persons have been checked by the police. 168 persons have been sent back to their original places as they were trying to cross the borders in violating quarantine rules and regulations. We are conducting continuous uh, quarantine operations so, and we have deployed approximately 10,000 officers to conduct patrols in their respective areas. So therefore, all the times obey with quarantine rules and regulations. Now taking a look at the global situation regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Infectious disease experts from around the world are warning that the speed and scale of the coronavirus outbreak in Indonesia has created a perfect breeding ground for a potentially new super strain that could be even more contagious and deadly than the Delta variant. Indonesia has reported a record 1,566 COVID-19 deaths, the country's highest daily death toll to date. The country has also recorded 49,071 new coronavirus infections during the last past 24 hours. Indonesia surpassed in India and Brazil's infection rates last week, becoming the country reporting the world's highest number of daily cases. Indonesia's daily infections have been given the highest in the world for the past week with most cases recorded in Java, which is home to 60% of the population. Medical facilities in big cities across the island have for months been under immense pressure, unable to cope with the influx in patients. Many people have died at home, unable to find treatment. According to Health Ministry data, the most aggressive Delta variant, which has been partly blamed for the crisis in Java, has spread to 11 provinces elsewhere. As the Delta variant spreads to new provinces causing shortages of beds and oxygen, health experts fear that such areas which have weaker health systems could face an even deeper crisis. Rising COVID-19 infections spark fears of pandemic resurgence in the United States as the Delta variant spreads across country and beyond. Cities ponder whether to revive some curbs. Cases are increasing in all 50 states of the United States, while several cities are once again considering or are already imposing mask mandates such as California. Meanwhile, Olympic organizers have said that three more competitors at the Tokyo Games, including one resident of the athlete's village, had tested positive for the virus. Organizers have further said that Olympics-related cases has risen by 19, bringing the total number of disclosed cases to 106. After putting their Olympic dreams on hold for more than a year, at least 22 athletes have seen their dreams dashed as they tested positive for the virus, forcing them to withdraw from the competition. While countries around the world are furling their concerns about the severe resurgence of the pandemic, the coronavirus overall has killed over 4.1 million people and infected over 193.2 million globally. There are more news at home. Wife of MP Rishad Badiuddin, her father and the intermediary who brought the girl to the house of Mr. Badiuddin for domestic service were arrested this morning by police in connection with her death. Police media spokesman, senior DIG Ajit Rohana said that they were arrested considering statements related to investigations. Meanwhile, brother of MP's wife has been arrested on the charge of raping the 22-year-old girl who was in domestic service earlier at Mr. B Rishad Badiuddin's house. Police conducted investigation and 20 statements have been recorded in respect of the incidents. And uh, according to the investigation and the evidence collected as scientific, circumstantial and technical evidence, it has been revealed that two offences uh, uh, have been committed uh, in respect of the girl. The offences are human trafficking, section 360C of the penal code and in addition to that uh, cruelty to children, section 308 B of the penal code. Accordingly, the wife of the ex-minister, a uh, 46-year-old woman, Shabdin Ayesha, was arrested this morning by the investigation team. In addition to that, the father-in-law of the ex-minister, 70-year-old person, Mohammed Shabdin, was arrested by police. In addition to that, the main trafficker was arrested. He is 64-year-old person, Ponnaya Pandaram alias Shankar of Diagam area recorded 20 statements in respect of the witnesses. Among them, 
two uh, women have given a statement. They have served as domestic servants, servants at the official residence of the uh, ex-minister whilst he was functioning as a minister since 2015 to 2019. 22 year old woman uh, of Diagam area has made the statement to the police that while she was serving as a domestic servant at the official residence of the minister Mackenzie Road, Colombo, she was raped uh, by a person. Person has been identified as the brothering law of the ex-minister, a permanent resident of uh, Madhavachi area. Accordingly, investigation team has arrested uh, the suspect. He has been identified as uh, Shihabdin Ismadin, 44-year-old person. The suspect would be produced before the Kalambu magistrate today and police are seeking to obtain a detention order for a period of 72 hours in terms of the provisions of the Criminal Procedure Code and uh, Kalambu South Crime Detective Bureau Colombo South uh, Children and Women Bureau and Borella Police are jointly conducting further investigations into the incident. A protest was conducted yesterday in front of the Hiovit Divisional Secretariat, remanding to punish the offenders and to bring justice for the deceased girl. People in the estate sector took part in the protest. In the meantime, State Minister Roshan Ranasinghe says the solutions for half of the problems identified at Bisopura Vedikachi village during the President's Gama Samaga Pilisandara program has been solved. The Gama Samaga Pilisandara program was held on the 16th of January with the participation of President Gotabe Rajapaksha. The main objective of the Gama Samaga Pilisandra program is to identify long-standing problems of the rural communities and to provide sustainable solutions to them. Accordingly, President Gotabe Rajapaksha visited remote villages and looked into their problems. Bisopura Vidikachi village is considered as a remote village in the Polo Naro district. The main livelihood of the people in the village is agriculture. Some of the main problems faced by the people are the human-elephant conflict, the lack of water facilities, the lack of schools and the lack of ownership of a land or a house. 79 problems have been identified during the program. The president has directed relevant state institutions to provide solutions to the problems amidst the COVID pandemic. During the progress review discussion yesterday at the Mahavali D Zone Residential Manager's Office, it was disclosed that solutions have been given to about 50% of the problems. Northern Province Governor Mahipal Herat, State Minister Siripal Gamnath, officials of the Presidential Secretariat and a group of people attended this discussion. Minister Bandalagunavardhana says that salary anomalies in the education service, including teachers and principals, can be rectified by establishing an enclosed department. He mentioned this during a media briefing in Colombo today. Minister Bandalagunavardhana said that they are always on the side of teachers and parents. He said that there is no secret or other plans except to protect free education and nurturing. He said they are on the stance that the basic salary of teachers should be increased by more than 100 percent. A department has to be established by integrating education service, teachers advisory service and other services to prepare such a salary structure. Now here are some news reports on development here at home. The bridge constructed across Venerua, Velapahalo Oya was vested with the public. Today, 30 million rupees has been spent to build the bridge. Deploying of bus for the transport facilities of the Venerua villages also took place on the occasion. The bridge was vested with the public on an invitation from Anunayak of the Askiria chapter, Venerua Upali Ter, and under the patronage of Central Province Governor Lalit U. Gamage. The Akurasa Driver Training School of Sri Lanka Transport Board was recommenced yesterday. Goods were distributed to be used among the depots of the districts. Renovating the premises by laying asphalt also commenced. A group of officials, including State Minister Dilum Amulgama, were present on the occasion. The development of the Kirimatya Kitulgas Vava tank at Mihintale Divisional Secretariat area commenced yesterday under the Irrigation Prosperity National Program. The development activities are expected to be completed in three months at a cost of over 4 million rupees. A group of people, including State Minister Duminadi Sanayaka, were present on the occasion. The final procession of the historic Ruhunu Kataragama Mahadevale Asala Festival is parading the streets. This will be telecast live over the national television at 10.30 tonight. The 13th procession of the Asala Festival paraded the streets last night.
Khadragama Asla Perahara Festival commenced on the 10th. The final procession today will move up to Kirivihera to perform the ritual to offer a part of donations received by the Khadragama Devale. After performing religious rituals by the Chief Judicial Sanganaika of Ruhunumagam Patua and Chief Prelate of Kirivihera, Venerable Kobavakadam in the Terra, the Basnaka Nilame will make the throne speech as a tradition of ending the procession. Thereafter, following the speech of officer in charge of the camp, the Perahara will proceed to Mahadevala, Valli Amma Devala, and end after returning to Mahadevala. Kathragame Asla festival will end following the water cutting ceremony in Manikganga tomorrow. <laughs> We'll be back with international news after this break.